Good morning friends and co-learners. This video is part of a series on literary criticism and theory which I have decided to uh, upload into YouTube. So we will start with the Greek masters. So this video, in this video I will be concentrating on the criticism, literary criticism of Plato. So you must be familiar with Plato. Plato is a disciple of Socrates and much of Socrates' Socrates' writing, uh, uh, Socrates' philosophies are known today because of Plato. Socrates never wrote a single word. He, uh, he was known as a speaker. It was uh, Plato who uh, wrote about Socrates in his dialogues and other works. So we know about Socrates today. So Socrates lived in a uh, lived in times when Athens was very rich in uh, art, literature, uh, drama, uh, etc., architecture, etc. So uh, Plato was uh, familiar with most of the dramatists like Sop Sophocles, Aristophanes, Aeschylus, Euripides, and etc. So let's. In this video, I'll be concentrating only on uh, Plato as a literary critic. Plato is a philosopher. Uh, he has written lots on politics, ethics, and various fields. But in this video, I'll be concentrating only on Plato as a literary critic. So what was Plato's opinion on literature or art in general? So Plato's opinions on literature and art can be mostly traced in his uh, famous book Republic. Republic is a book about an ideal sta state, how an ideal country should be or how an ideal state should be. According to Plato, an ideal republic is governed by philosophers. All the rulers would be philosophers and poets would be banished from an ideal republic. So. Plato had a very negative opinion on poets and artists. So there is a reason why. So let's look at this work, uh, Republic. You must know that Republic has also in, in a way inspired uh, Tom, Thomas More's Utopia and other utopian uh, writings which came in the future. So let's uh, look at what, what is uh, Plato's opinion on art. Plato believed in an idea called idealism. So, according to Plato, if there's a circle, you think I'm drawing a circle, but uh, that circle is imperfect because it's only an imitation. It's only a copy. So there is an ideal circle in an ideal world and all the circles are just the imitation of that ideal work. So, ideal uh, world. So, everything in reality. Take a tree. The tree you see is an imperfect tree. But this is an imitation or a copy of an ideal tree that exists somewhere. You can... The ideal world can be compared to the Christian heaven or... But it's not an exact uh, comparison. So, you think there is an ideal tree and a real tree which is actually a copy of the ideal tree now i'm drawing a painting of the tree so it's twice removed from reality it's a copy of a copy so it the painting in a way is far away from reality you're taken away from reality so that's uh, the biggest argument of uh, plato literature art it's twice removed from reality. So we cannot know the truth. It's, it's far away from the truth. Uh, so uh, philosophers usually consider truth to be some kind of ideal, especially ancient philosophers, not the present day philosophers, considers truth to be something ideal and um, something, uh, um, something of great value. But uh, when it comes to literature, it's like it's removed from that kind of ideal. It's far away from the truth. Now, let's see why uh, Plato judged poetry in such a bad manner. Uh, 
so let's look at a poet so what does a poet depend on when he's writing a poem or creating an artwork or writing a play so a poet or an artist he depends on his inspiration inspiration he gets inspired and he says you think he gets inspired by a beautiful woman and he says her eyes are as beautiful as sardines her lips are look just like a red red rose now he's not speaking out of his reason he's not using his reason he's speaking out of his passions he's speaking about out of his emotions he his word his writings are far away from reason so plato considered rationality to be an important part of uh, philosophy or thinking so something that's purely based on passion or an emotion is not something perfect and uh, philosophy is considered to be something much superior to uh, poetry where because philosophy depends on reason logic and something definite something real a poet always depend on depends on some kind of impulses he's he uh, or some some kind of passion that comes to his mind some feelings so these feelings are very much far away from uh, the reason the ideal reason but uh, plato believed that poetry is necessary in some rare occasions just like hymns to god and uh, praises to great men but in other occasions poetry is useless according to plato another point which plato mentioned is the emotional reaction to poetry what happens when a person reads a poem he gets very emotional he he becomes passionate so again he's not thinking rationally he's think he's uh he's thinking in a very very emotional way in a very passionate way so reason becomes a prisoner when it comes to poetry poetry during uh, plato's times were very sentimental and um, it it had lots of uh, uh, embalming and uh, su- such outposts uh, so he considered uh, such things to have a negative impact on the readers mind poetry treats good and evil as if it's the same so even when a positive passion is explained or an anger of a person is explained it's a, uh, explained in a very emotional way and you f- you feel that that's a uh, necessary emotion uh, poetry portrays gods and heroes in a particular way gods are presented as very judgmental very angry ruthless and um, um, gods are presented to be revengeful and heroes are shown as very emotional with their with exaggerate with their exaggerated movements to play to the aim of poetry or any writing is to instruct to teach something or uh, give some kind of morals or values to the readers so pleasure what is the main aim of poetry pleasure so pleasure uh, just by giving pleasure um, you uh, that doesn't make Uh, something valuable that does not make uh, a writing valuable just because it gives pleasure it should have some intrinsic value it should be able to communicate a particular value a moral or something like that plato also criticized drama he believed that drama uh, communicates to the most baser instincts in the in a human being the most baser instincts dramas those times were full of sentiments and outposts uh and all that i to- i spoken uh, earlier uh plato also no- noted some other interesting thing so you think there's an actor think you are an actor so you are acting 
as a robber or you're acting as a murderer so it in some way affects your character you you you, uh, you become in order to act as a robber or in, in order to act as a uh, murderer you psych get psychologically prepared to do that role so it has an effect on our our character as an actor so she uh, plato believed in such a thing which um, may, um, present day people may not agree so plato also told that when you act as good as a good person sometimes that too can uh, affect your uh, character so what do you see in a tragedy uh, a person dies so sometimes that gives you a kind of pleasure seeing someone die what do you see in a comedy you see uh, a person making a mistake a person forgets something or he uh, makes a false judgment or he something hits on his head and falls down in a slapstick comedy you have people walking and uh, stumbling on a um, stumbling on some would be uh, uh, stumbling on a piece of wood or something like that and uh, you break into laughter so actually both in tragedy and in a comedy you are actually enjoying the misery of someone else you are, you are laughing at them you are, you are you are in one way becoming a lesser uh, human being but plato agreed to one art form what do you think it was speaking he he liked oratory he believed that oratory is uh, something great even though he did not like poetry drama and uh, other art forms he admired oratory so uh, you ca cannot say that plato completely rejected literature he in uh, in some places admired uh, debating skills if you if you look at uh, dialogues is is talking about how debating skills ca can be awesome or ca can be used to express your ideas you may see, you may think that plato had a very negative uh, idea of uh, uh, literature plato has a very big role as a critic he was one of the uh, first persons you, you can find a string following so many people reacted to plato's uh, criticism like stephen gosen or uh, who uh, who supported plato's argument in school of abuse uh, or um, sir philip sidney who just uh, who uh, questioned uh, plato plato's idea in his uh, apology for poetry and uh, plato has a uh, great influence on the critics who came later that's why we value plato's criticism as an important step in the study of literary uh, criticism and theory that's why my first video is on plato thank you